For preparation of the surgery, a radiographic image of the hip joint in two planes is required. Here, application of a hip endoprosthesis on the right-hand side is foreseen. The size-scaled radiographs are the basis for the planning of the endoprosthesis implantation. Ideally, the planning is done using digital planning software. Hereby, it is determined which implants are to be used and how they are going to be inserted. In addition, the expected implant sizes are determined. The surgery begins with the customary hygienic measures. Specifically, the patient's leg and the operating field around the hip joint to be operated on are washed with iodine or, in case of allergies, with other disinfectants and covered with sterile drapes. The patient is positioned appropriately so he or she can be optimally treated. Here, a knee roll is used to bend the leg slightly. This relaxes the vessels and nerves on the extensor side. This facilitates the acetabular preparation. The so-called landmarks are visually marked. Here, the surgeon first identifies the spina iliaca anterior superior. Subsequently, the greater trochanter. The geometry of the incision is defined by these structures. Next, the skin incision is precisely defined, which is to be located ventrally of the greater trochanter, where the center of the longitudinally running skin incision is to be positioned at the level of the tip of the greater trochanter. The skin incision is created. Then, two hooks are inserted, and the fascia latte, or, in case of a more ventrally located incision, the fascia of the tensor fascia latte is incised longitudinally in a slightly more ventral position. Vigilant hemostasis is to be applied whenever necessary. The fascia is now fully opened with scissors. Thus, direct access to the hip joint capsule is obtained. First, the femoral neck is exposed outside the capsule. Here, the first retractor is inserted and positioned above the femoral neck, followed by the second retractor at the lower edge of the femoral neck. It can be seen that the surgery is feasible without substantial bleeding. The capsule is cleaned. A third retractor is inserted central over the edge of the pelvis, so that the anterior portion of the joint capsule can be removed under visual control. This is carried out with a scalpel and clamps as shown here. Alternatively, an electrocautery can be used. After resection of the capsule, the retractors are repositioned intracapsular. Now the femoral neck is cut at an angle of 90 degrees to the femoral neck with an oscillating saw. The femoral head is extracted by means of a corkscrew. The remaining parts of the capsule around the acetabulum are removed. In the meantime, the wound area is rinsed. Then, reaming out of the cartilage residue is commenced. For this, 
reamers of increasing size are used. An essential factor for size selection is the preoperative planning, but also the visual impression. Removed material is seen. The acetabular bed is cleaned and reaming is continued down to the cancellous acetabular bed. A trial implant is used to check how the artificial acetabular cup is to be positioned. Here, a monoblock cup is being prepared for implantation. The cup is made of highly cross-linked polyethylene enriched with vitamin E, an antioxidant to counteract aging of the polyethylene, a thin titanium layer onto which the bone will later grow. The cup is applied to the insertion instrument and fixated by means of hammer strokes using the press fit method specifically by compressing the bone. The positioning instrument is removed. Cup implantation is now complete. Now preparation of the femur is commenced. To this end, the patient's leg is repositioned. It is placed over and crossing the other leg, which is lowered and rotated outward. During the repositioning, the knee roll is removed. With suitable retractors, the upper end of the femur is then exposed so that the stem preparation can take place. For this purpose, the retractors are carefully inserted to hold off the muscles so that they will not be injured. The surgical technique shown here does not entail muscle detachment or muscle transection. Capsule remnants are separated sharply with the knife so that the bone is completely exposed. Here now, it is evident once more that the surgery is almost bloodless. During the implantation of the short stem, exposure of the region of the greater trochanter is not necessary, a major advantage since the muscle attachments are thereby spared. The access to the femur is now excellently visible and the preparation of the femoral bone can begin. The femoral canal is opened by means of curved rasps. The rasps are advanced along Adam's arch into the cancellous bone, opening up the medullary cavity. Subsequently, the sharp rasps of increasing sizes that already have the shape of the implant the medullary cavity is reamed open. For this purpose, special rasp handles are used that are shaped specifically, depending on whether surgery is done on the right or on the left hand side, so that the soft tissues are protected. Thereafter, it is checked whether with a standard or with an increased offset, that is to say, with increased distance from the shaft to the pelvis, the better position is achieved. The planned offset is confirmed in most cases. For this, a trial reduction with the rasp is performed. Component positioning is verified with the X-ray image intensifier. If everything is correct, the rasp is replaced with the original implant. Using a special insertion instrument, the original stem is carefully driven into the femoral medullary cavity. The implant used here is an optimist stem. The stem is placed in an identical position as the rasp used for the trial reduction. When using ceramic heads, cleaning of the cone is very important to achieve correct fixation of the head onto the metal cone of the stem. 
then the definitive reduction takes place. Final radiographic verification and documentation. It can be seen that the implant is implanted so that it is anchored with a perfect fit in the femur along Adam's arch and the pelvis as planned preoperatively. The final functional testing follows. Is the joint stable? Is the mobility good? Suturing of the subcutaneous tissue and stapling of the skin follow. Once everything is in order, the wound is closed. To this end, the muscle is placed back into position, wound drainage inserted, the wound rinsed, and the muscle fascia closed with single interrupted sutures. <laughs>